Hey guys, Leon here. And before we get into any of the benchmarking, uh, I'd like to show you guys how to install Octane X because I found a weird glitch that is going to affect most of you guys, especially those of you that uses uh, Redshift Render. Okay, so once you log into your account, you need to find the uh, Octane Render for Cinema 4D. You're going to go to Metal and you're going to find the latest one that's, that says PR12. You know, read all the legal that we never read, but we are supposed to. Click click the sell your soul button. So once you get into that folder, you need to decompress it. And depending on what host app you're using, I'm using R25, so I'm going to delete all the previous versions. And I'm only going to leave the R25 version inside here. Quick way, so a quick way to install it, you go to right click on the application, go to options and show in finder. And then you should find your plugins folder in the Cinema 4D folder. What you want to do is drag and drop your newly downloaded folder in there, the Octane folder. And one thing to note that make sure it's empty. As you see, I have a Redshift folder. The issue you're going to run into is that Octane isn't fully optimized for the M1 chip, meaning that it has to run in Rosetta mode. But Redshift is fully optimized. So now you have to actually choose between the two. If you have both Octane and Redshift inside the folder, Cinema 4D is going to keep crashing. So what you need to do is put one of them outside of the folder or to your desktop and run the app either in Rosetta mode for Octane or M1 mode for Redshift. All right, so let's talk about Octane next. As you can see, Octane X is pretty responsive. Even though I think this is a very bad way to show speed because it's not actually the final render. So a lot of people like when they see certain videos on on YouTube, they, they think, oh my God, this is way faster than a 3080 or 3090 or is the same speed. The live preview and the actual final render are totally two different things and it should not be compared like that. Um, what's really good about Acting X off the bat is that we get to use all the VRAM on the computer. So it's a 64 gigabytes RAM. So we have 63 available to use. So we can actually fill this up. But that, that'll be another video <laughs> to see how to fill up 64 gigabytes of RAM. That's never been done before. I'm not sure. This is the single most RAM I've ever seen in the GPU. I'm not sure if there's an, another consumer GPU with it. Um, let me show you guys how to actually use the demo scenes. First things first, one, once you download the package, so once you open these project files, the first thing you should do is just hit the render button. That way we both have the same render. There's no extra textures to download and we will have the same render basically. So just hit shift R for the other scene, for the other scene, the lab scene. What you'll need to do is I usually just go to frame zero and I go to dynamics cache and I always bake the cache. And I usually render from frame 216. What you can do is you can match it up to whichever scene I have here. So that's how you can match my um, scenes. Cinema 4D, great dynamics in the works. I'm not sure how these balls are getting out of the box. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. And that's how you get to start rendering. And you can see the time. I think this is pretty accurate most of the time. 
So let's get into the benchmarks. So there you have it, the Mighty M1 Max. I think a lot of viewers are getting the wrong impression of these benchmarks. Um, these benchmarks isn't strictly to compare the M1 Max to all the desktop DPUs. I'm only comparing it to the GPUs I have on hand currently. And that's why I'm sharing the project files to you guys so you guys can actually use it on your computer and you know you can post it in the comments let people know what types of speed it, what type of speed you're getting what type of render speed you're getting you know i want everybody to make an informed decision because you know apple they're very good at marketing like they set a lot of numbers three and a half times the transistor count four times the unified memory and six times the memory bandwidth of the m1 it's like a racing car. And they were right on some things. What? What the f I know it sounds crazy enough, but they were technically right. Cause if you look at the charts, the performance was r relative. If you look at the charts, the performance was relative to the watt wattage it's using. So technically the M1, at 40 watts is going to be more performance based efficient than a 3080 would using like 230 watts because uh, my razor blade was using a 230 watts what bro what are you talking about man so yeah so i mean it's kind of a lesson to um to us as consumers to so don't really take numbers or whatever they stay on stage because i every time i hear all of these big numbers four times the performance in davinci resolve five times faster gpu performance eight times faster pro i always imagine the real nerdy engineer in the back sitting down and he's like psych that's the wrong number oh! 